This is the decorative apple tree and the blooms are beginning to fade already. Just all coming from a deep red to some pale pink. But over there, you can see that these lilacs, really lots of them. A lilac. So, from a phenology point of view, this means means something. Somebody can tell me what I should be doing when the lilacs come out. They're beautiful. And this here, the blossom on this is Musta Maria Arroni chokeberry in the United States. This, this hedge is just absolutely filled with blossom at the moment. This is the flower on the laburnum. I always noticed is there when these when there's a good number of flowers on the laburnum tree then uh, you always get a good apple harvest so that's what I'm hoping for this year again in the background you can see that that decorative apple tree all the blossoms have faded on it but what's going to be really spectacular is this snowball bush just look at the blossoms coming out on it but, uh, once these turn white they're absolutely beautiful but there's hundreds absolutely hundreds of blossoms on this now flowers quite wonderful yeah it is I had sweet basil and Greek basil and red basil and lime basil. But you can see that the leaves have been damaged. We had a cold snap just a, for about a few days and these basil plants have have suffered because of it. And also here with the green soup celery and uh, the parsley you can see that the leaves at the top are all brown this is my root pouch an eight litre or a two gallon root pouch and you can see exactly the same has happened to my uh, gherkins leaves have turned brown but I hope they might recover weather's getting warmer again but both of them have uh, really suffered just some little cold snap that we had in the Delta Bird 5 ah uh, but the stevia it seems to have survived okay this is my keyhole garden and this year I've just planted herbs in it but those two bamboo poles I've been hoping that uh, those gherkins will climb up it got lots of compost in the centre there having a closer look at it this is it uh, chives they're going to flower and next to it just sprouted this uh, slow Slow bold, slow grow coriander. And then next to it, uh, some parsley which hasn't come up. Then here, uh, some uh, basil, maybe the Greek basil. And then next to it, the lemon basil. And that one there is the basil. And over 
over here. So these little ones coming up there. Is the green celery soup coming around here? There's more coriander, a different type, and uh, next to it, a dill, lots of dill coming up. And this is a problem that Dale, I think, has talked about the fact that. All the leaves at the top of the chilies have uh, gone all crinkly and horrible. And I read somewhere that it's because uh, there's a calcium deficiency, which uh, calcium apparently goes to building cell walls, and if you don't have enough calcium, then uh, these crinkly leaves sort of have to get some calcium in there to see if it'll help it. And that's uh, sucks in the key really. So that's the keyhole garden and it's looking good. And there is the allium. They're coming out. And just next to it, see that big bad boy there. Poppies. And over here, more allium. Behind them, some tulips which have passed the best. These are the remnants of my tomatoes. Big long stalks and a few leaves at the top. That one's about the best one. Look at that one there. How poor it looks. Um, I'm not sure what uh, what they are because I had about four different species, two from Halver and some Roma and some Butcher. So the names are lost and long gone now. Well, here we have the red currants which are set and are beginning to fill up now, which is good. This bush has got tons of them. Halver's beans there. Yeah, that just a little stump. That's the only one that I've left going up here. There's a couple over here as well. They've suffered a lot from the frost and they just they don't want to climb up for some reason. I've got this bamboo bamboo pole is just too slippy for them to hold on to. But they won't they won't stay up there, they just fall down again. And over here is and then here is my northern giant. You can see there. Yeah, it's already setting berries, which is nice. And here we have my shallots. Weeds in here. The worms are even little. Some of them have not come up. There's one in there, which hasn't done anything. There's another one in there. Maybe it's putting out a little shoot now. But some of them are doing really well. Especially that one there. Look how big and luscious that is. And I'm never able to get rid of this clover type thing. It's always there in the ground. We we'll hop over here. And these are the garlic. strong and lovely but there's a hole in there must have been some other cultivar that nothing has grown in that little section there and you can see these ones here are much thinner and 
those are the gourmet garlic. And that's it. Well, let's continue with this worm's eye view. I followed Dan's instructions and I have planted these leeks in big holes. I grew them on inside uh, one of those smart pouches and then transplanted them out. They've been out about a week now and we're going to put on their true leaves. So I may have about 40 of them in here. Some of them are doing better than others. So those are the leeks all along there. 